Hi everyone, welcome to After Class with Ballet for All. A podcast by two passionate adult ballerinas about all things adult ballet related. And some random thoughts in between. We're so glad you're here. So grab your water bottle or a cup of coffee and join us for a quick chat after class. Hi Elena, how are you? Good, and you? Doing well. In today's class, we were talking about so you guys had questions about different type of shoes and you all turned to me like, oh, the professional, we know about the shoes. But the reality is, and this will be a shock to everyone, even as a professional dancer, I, this is a very new territory for me. Like the differences of type of demi shoes and point shoes and all that. It, remember, I come from Cuba. Like although I've been out of Cuba for 10 years. Yeah. It's just still very new to me that how many options you all have out here. Like, so today we're going to go over, Hannah, I think it's a good idea to go over the different type of shoes that we can choose. Hannah has a little bit more experience than me, believe it or not, in a year and a half, two years. <laughs> she's investigated it all and she tried them all. Almost. <laughs> So what do you think, how do we start? Because something interesting is, which we call in Cuba, demi point to what everyone calls like flat shoes or slippers, mm -hmm. yeah? And then we have the demi point, which is what Maggie has at the moment that is not fully point, but it's still quite harder than the slippers. And then we have the point shoes. The one in between was new to me. Yes, it was new to me too. Honestly, I had never even heard of them until Maggie, one of our classmates, um, started wearing them. And they're kind of like a transitional shoe between slippers and point to help you start strengthening your feet for point. So that was new to me too, which I don't really have a lot of expertise on demi point shoes, but I, I think today talking about slippers is a great place to start because I remember when I was um, starting to take ballet classes and I went to the dance store to get slippers, they were asking me all these questions about my preferences and I, I had no idea that there were so many options. And so I'm sure I'm not the only one who has felt that way. Your first time going to the store and you're like, I just need some ballet shoes. And you're thinking there's like <laughs> one type of shoe and there is not. So yeah, we thought this might be kind of a helpful one for people who are just getting into it of knowing the difference. So when you walk in the store and they ask you, you can just say like a pro what your preferences are. <laughs> So I think a good place to start, because it's it's kind of the two main categories, um, is canvas versus leather. So yeah. ballet shoes are pretty much always made of one of the two. Um, leather, I think, when I was a kid, leather was what we had to wear. Was it the same in Cuba that you were required to wear leather shoes? Oh no, <laughs> I wish we had leather shoes. <laughs> no. So in, in Cuba, it's interesting, but um, everything we always had, at least in my school, like the vocational schools away from, from mm -hmm. uh, the capital, we had uh, donations. It came from China, it came from different Italy, it came from different brands, but we were basically given what fit on your foot. So we, whatever we got donation that year, donated that year, that month, it will be the shoes that they will give to the students. Always remember, everything was for free for us. So we, we, we were very privileged from the, the sense of having everything for free, but then like everything is not perfect, so we couldn't be fitted and choose what we wanted. But no, it was canvas what we trained with the entire time. That's interesting. Yeah, I know um, it's pretty common, I think, in the States for leather to be required for kids. Um, and then canvas was kind of something that I didn't really see until I came back to ballet as an adult. And I think what attracted me to canvas is that it's more breathable. Uh, I always felt like the leather shoes felt a little, I don't know, just they would get really hot and sweaty on the inside which I don't know maybe that's a me problem but <laughs> I feel like I'm probably not the only one um, so I like canvas for that reason and then mostly the canvas that is used is stretch canvas and so I just felt like I had a easier time articulating through my feet with stretch canvas than with leather where leather tends to be a little bit um, just harder to move your feet and it's not as stretchy it's tends to be a little bit thicker, less breathable. So I actually prefer canvas and 
I'm glad that that's an option, especially for adults. And then the other main category of shoes is split sole versus full sole. That's hard to say, full sole. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a tongue twister, <laughs> full sole. Um, I'm glad that it's you saying it and not me. Otherwise, <laughs> everyone will be like, which language is she talking? <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. Split sole is so if if for someone who maybe hasn't seen this before, split sole is where there's a half a sole on the ball of the foot area, and then the other half of the sole is on the heel, and there's no sole in between. And then a full sole is there is a sole running the entire length of the shoe. So I prefer split sole. I think the main reason being is that when you point your foot, there's less like bunching in the arch of your feet because there's no sole in that area. So it's less fabric because the soles on ballet shoes are are generally suede and it's not like they're rubber like a street shoe. So they do bunch and move. But I, in my experience with full sole shoes, you get a lot of bunching in the arch. Do you have a preference? Yeah, so it's exactly the same. I prefer it when they are split. Mm -hmm. uh, I do find, I will advise everyone not to go with the first split shoe that you get if you're going for a split. I would say that I had a lot of trouble finding the one that fits exactly on the ball of my foot. Uh, I don't like them when they start a little bit like in, like after the start of the toes. So I really like them mm -hmm. right behind where my insteps is and then it doesn't go all the way to the heel as well. Like you have to be very careful with how you shoe, like choosing your shoes really. Like you're gonna stand on your heel a lot. So if it's like halfway, th like through the end of your heel, you're gonna feel it, it's gonna be uncomfortable. It's gonna be like rubbing your, your food. But I will definitely go with split um, shoes for sure. It just feels more exactly what you were saying, Anna. Like when you put the combination with Canva and a split to me, it gives you more articulations through the foot. You can really feel flexing all the shoe, molding to you. Although I do think that um, the leather shoe is a little bit more grippy on the floor. So like it will grab the floor easy, sometimes easier. And not all dancing rooms are like the ballet floor which is like um the marvel of i don't remember how to call it how would you call oh, it marley marley that one <laughs> so not everyone has the marley floor and and it, when they don't have it it gets a little bit slippery a uh, leather shoe will help better but again i think i will go with a combination of canva and split just for the fact also it's a little bit easier to point your feet so if you don't have that strain, you haven't done all that conditioning yet, it's just a little bit easier to get to, to know where your point is, where your toes are pointing, rather than just going all the way to a very stiff um, leather shoe. But it's preference, right? That's why we're giving you this podcast. That's why we want to talk our preferences, what we've seen, what is out there, and don't get rushed into going to a shop and like, yeah, I want the camera, I want to split. Try everything. Try standing for a while in different positions. See how your heel is feeling, your toes. I think that there is a little bit more to talk about this, right? Yeah, I think that's a great point is um, going into a store. You know, I know that um, we can get so much stuff online now and it's so common. I feel like most people, we kind of just default to ordering things online. But similar to when we talked about in the, the episode where we're talking about leotards, I think especially your first few pairs going into a store to let them fit you and to see what your preferences are because it's really hard to guess at what, what you're going to like or not like without actually trying them on. Um, and like I said, there's just so many options and that leads to the next point, which is color because there's even multiple colors of shoes that you can get. I know pink is really the most traditional, it's the most common. I know, especially when you're a kid, a lot of studios require pink, like you don't really have a choice. Um, I think it's pink for girls and usually black for boys for, for kids programs, but as an adult, um, you know, I know a lot of studios for adults, they don't care what color you wear. And so you can go with like more of the flesh tone shoes. I've seen, you know, uh, women shoes, black shoes. Um, so there's a lot of color 
choices in the adult world. So what do you have a preference for, for color of what you like? So I will say be very picky again with this because it's something that you're gonna put on in your ballet class and ballet classes are all about the lines and how your leg match and, and blend with your shoe. Um, I like the flesh color, the skin color, but again, I, I order online in China plenty of time. This, oh, they look perfect. They look my skin color. I'm Latina, I'm a little bit tan. So, and then they got too dark. So they went tan, but a little bit yellowish and it wasn't right. And I had to keep putting them on because I already got them and I'm not gonna like either send them back or I gonna use them, but I didn't like them. And every time I was doing ballet classes, I just didn't feel quite right because the whole outfit was destroyed for a shoe that I paid for, that I chose <laughs> by myself. I'm like, yes, this is it. So um, I will say, match them with the outfits that you're gonna use them more often. Like match them with your ballet thighs if you're gonna put thighs. I agree. I think, um, yeah, kind of thinking through what your preferences are. I, I know that, um, you know, some people like wearing pink tights. And so I think if you're gonna wear the pink tights, having the pink shoes is nice because it keeps the, the leg line long. There's no break at the point of your foot. Um, but I know, um, some people like to wear either flesh colored tights or no tights um you know if you're wearing like bike shorts or leggings or something like that i at this point because i take ballet so often honestly i have a pair of pink shoes for when i wear pink tights and a pair of flesh colored shoes for when i wear black tights or no tights so the the more you're taking class and you're willing to kind of expand your your ballet wardrobe you might opt to have a couple different pairs so um which I guess would lead into our next point about shopping is sizing because that is another big key part of this whole ballet slipper journey is figuring out sizing and sizing is weird <laughs> in ballet slippers. Oh, God. <laughs> it is, it is so weird. Like go and try the shoe, make sure that they explain you um the different sizes a to d so what does that mean hannah the the a and up to d yeah so this was one of those things when i was when i first went in for uh to get shoes and they asked what size and i told them i was like ah street shoe size i can tell you that and then they asked me for width and i didn't even know because in street shoes there's usually not you know multiple width options but in ballet shoes they have width choices, so it's usually A to D. Sometimes I'll notice when I order online, they don't have A, it starts at B and is like B, C, D, and those are the, the width indicators. So A is narrowest, D is widest. Um, so it's nice because it gives you a little bit more customization with the size of your shoe because obviously not everyone's foot is the same width so if you have narrow feet you can go down for more of like an a or b and if you have wider feet you can go c or d um, if you are ordering online and you're going off of measuring your foot you want to measure at the widest part of your foot to determine what your your letter is um, but yeah they they do have that different widths and if you are going to order online making sure that you're really looking at the size chart because I know for me, like I'm almost two full sizes different between my street shoes and my ballet shoes. Like I'm a six and a half US sizing for street shoes and I'm like a four and a half or a five in ballet shoes. So it really varies. So definitely again, like we said earlier, going in the store to try them on, I think is the best way to start and get that frame of reference. Then you're not dealing with like sending them back you know back and forth and delaying um and then if you are going to go for it and do online definitely read the size chart and the size chart varies by brand too so just because you're you know maybe a five in one brand like there are certain brands where i'm a five and a half and then i'm a four and a half in a different one so it's really i don't know why it has to be so complicated honestly but it is like they just should all come to a consensus and be like okay people we are the ballet brands let's all decide the same but yeah, here in Australia, like I was a less like the sizes of normal clothes. I was like an XL in China and here I'm an extra small. <laughs> so I'm in an XS here. I'm like, what? 
But that's obviously from where I come from. Everyone is very petite and thin in China. And I was like an M and L, so medium, large or extra large, depending. So you can imagine how much is going to change with the size of the ballet shoe, which is meant to be tight on your feet and all that. Um, so from my experience, the, the brands that I would recommend are Energetics, which is an Australian um, brand. I was uh, sponsored by, by them for a moment, for a time, like oh, close to a year. No anymore. But seriously, I trust their products like their shoes is what I wore for like a year and I had I only used one of the Demi Boeing shoes an entire year leather shoes and it was just wow. it lasted forever and again I'm not a sponsor by them anymore but I still go and buy this stuff because it's really good quality um, they are in, in the US if I'm not wrong they have a shop around there it's a little bit pricey compared to other brands but still, like when you want to have something that lasts, that would be a good option. I also tried Sodanza, which I think they are um, Brazilian or Portuguese, and they're really nice shoes. But um, I tried their, their, their shoes. I don't remember the type of shoes that I tried. Again, I bought them online in China, and they were really nice. They were spot on to the size that I ordered for. So what about you, Hannah? What, what would you recommend as brands? Yeah, I love Sodanza. I, I like their um, their Bliss model is what it's called. And I think it's one of their top sellers. And it is a little bit pricier than like Block or Capizio, at least in the stores by me. But I have narrow feet and I feel like it's a really good fit for narrow feet. Sometimes with some of the other brands, I feel like there's extra, excess fabric. Um, and with the the bliss model of the Sodansas, I feel like they just really hug my foot. I tend to get, they, they are a uh, stretch canvas split sole because I'm the same as you, that's my preference. And I really like them. Um, they come in a few different color variations and then um, they have like flesh tone, pink, ballet pink, a few different flesh tones. And I think they also have black. I'm not sure if they have white. Um, that's probably my favorite. And then I also like the block performas. Those are also a stretch canvas split sole, um, but they are a little bit wider and I, I don't feel like they have that same really nice snug fit. And the canvas isn't as stretchy as the, the Sodansas, but yeah, I think both of those are really good brands if you are gonna go in the canvas split sole direction. I honestly can't even give a recommendation for leather or full sole because I don't wear them. And so if you have a good recommendation, you can feel free to let us know and we will uh, we'll promote that. But I don't think either of us wear, wear them. So I really wouldn't even know where to, where to start with that. But I think Energetics, Sodansa, and Block are all three like reputable brands that make good quality products. And so you really can't go wrong with any of those brands. Definitely. So this has been very interesting, Hannah. I think we should promote you to like, we need to find a way for you to do a, a like a ballet shoe fitting um, course for sure. <laughs> like you have such a good like explanation of everything. So I definitely trust your your judgment on all these. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> One of my dreams is to to get uh, certified to be a point shoe fitter. Point shoes is like a whole other conversation that I'm sure we'll have at some point on an episode. This is just talking like ballet slippers. Point shoes is its whole own thing, but I love shoes. I love street shoes. I love ballet shoes. I love point shoes. I'm like, give me all the shoes. <laughs> salsa shoes too. I can't imagine. Sal oh my gosh. <laughs> Forgot about salsa shoes. My gosh. That's a whole, I used to have a bin of salsa shoes. Like when I, when I married my husband, he was like, what is this? When we were moving into the same house together. Cause I like roll up with all my stuff and he's like, what's in this bin? I'm like, oh, that's salsa shoes. He's like an entire bin of salsa shoes. I, I think I at one point had like 15 pairs and they're all bedazzled and sparkly and it was, it was <laughs> ridiculous, but. <laughs> that's lovely. I love it. Uh, I think we should leave the links in the description of this video about like the shoes we tried and the, the brands that they come from. Thank you so much for today's podcast. It was really interesting, Hannah, right? I loved it. Yeah, this was a this was a fun one to talk about and hopefully it's helpful for people as you're navigating the crazy world of ballet shoes. Definitely. Uh, we're going to see you in our next podcast, in our next episode. 
Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to After Class with Ballet for All. Join the community on YouTube and Instagram or come dance with us, our weekly Zoom classes for adult ballerinas like you. Links included in the episode description. Special thank you to our sponsors. See you next time after class. Podcast produced by Mission Bridge Media.